Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. What I wanna to talk to you all today about is the popping cork setup that I was using out there in my most recent video on the MDLR fishing channel. And that's this guy right here in front of me. It is a medium power hollow point rod from Old 18 Outfitters and it's got a fast action tip. Plenty of backbone on this guy. I've talked about it quite some time or extensively whenever I was talking about jetty fishing and things of that nature because I've been able to land some jacks out there off of the rocks plus also on my kayak and uh, it's just a great rod all the way around. So that's the rod that I was using because it's really stout and it just happened to be the one that I took with me on that particular trip. Uh, the fishing reel is the Pisifun Alios. I think that's the way it's pronounced. It's a 300 sized bait caster, plenty of firepower as far as being able to winch in some big fish. Why I'm gonna need to winch in some big fish, I don't know. It, again, it just happened to be what I was using whenever I was out there on the water. And uh, I just decided to go with this because there was backbone, the fast action tip gives enough flex so that when you're doing the whole popping cork action, that flex would help me to get the action to achieve what it was that I was looking for. And uh, the popping cork itself happens to be the bomber right here. I think it says, what is that, a paradise popper? So that's this guy. Uh, they are rather expensive. And uh, the main reason why I went with this one is because before everybody else started doing like the titanium, that black, wire titanium that doesn't kink. Uh, Bomber was one of the first ones to come out with it. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but um, that's the reason why I have went with this. I've, I've had it for a long time. I rarely use popping corks, but since we use the live shrimp, I'm very grateful to have used it because it helped us to put some fish on the video. And uh, this is just basically what I went with. I got tired of the other ones. I threw them all away and uh, the wire on them basically kinks when you catch a big fish. And I think everybody has followed suit now with this black wire titanium. So the bandwagon uh, brands and companies have now followed suit. One thing that I dislike about this particular popper, uh, I was experiencing whenever I would cast out my lure and I wasn't using split shot at all to help weigh down my shrimp and, and make him sink down. I was, it was just free line and uh, the cork would lay just like this on top of the water. It would take sometimes a few seconds, sometimes close to a minute for the cork to basically upright itself like that. Um, so I did not like that. What I ended up doing was adding a split shot. I believe this right here is like a, uh, I'd be lying if I told you. Let me actually take a look. Oh, it is a quarter ounce, so that's what I was gonna guess, but uh, I put a quarter ounce split shot right here at the bottom. You got these two brass beads right here, and uh, they just didn't get it done, but the minute that I put this little quarter ounce split shot down there, no matter how big the bait was, it basically uprighted itself, and uh, that seems to be getting the job done. I don't think that I'm gonna need a quarter ounce. It was just the, like, the size that I needed to be able to crimp on. Plus it kind of matches these brass beads right here. But um, yeah, so that's the cork that I'm using for no particular reason. I'm not some popping cork expert. I will never claim to be. I just uh, don't see the difference between all of them out there. Some of them are rather expensive. You got some popping cork companies that specialize in popping corks. Once I get my feet wet in the popping cork game, then maybe I will start going to other ones and trying those out, but uh, let's learn to walk first before we start a full-on sprint. So you're gonna see me slinging this popping cork until there's something that I don't like about it. Now, I've got, here we go. I'm gonna take the hook off the hook keeper and just kind of show y'all what it is that we are working with, how I set it up, because I got a lot of questions. Hey, what size hook were you using? What kind of hook were you using? Um, because I rarely ever keep fish, 
unless I plan to eat them that same day or the very next day, uh, you're not gonna see me keep fish. I don't like using treble hooks. Again, uh, I, I feel that it's harder to pull those trebles out of the fish's mouth and if they completely swallow it, it's like game over. That fish is done, whether it's a legal fish or not, um, it, their chances of surviving is going to be like decreased. So I'm using some circle hooks. Let's uh, put that right there so that hopefully you're going to be able to see this. I don't know. I got the light right behind me, so it's right in front of the lens. But that right there is an inline circle hook. Let's grab the package so that you can see. That's these right here. The perfect circle from Mustad. I think it's like a, what is it called? Demon Perfect Offset Circle. It's a two watt and you get 10 of them inside this package. I'm pretty sure they sell some uh, other smaller packages, but uh, perfect for live bait. And with that wire shank being very thin, you're not going to destroy the horn of the shrimp, which is where I like to hook those guys again. And uh, I guess if they keep falling off, then you can go through the tail. Uh, that's just the way that I've always hooked my live bait. Uh, if it's shrimp, I go through the horn. And uh, a lot of people will tell you, hey, hook them where the brain is. That's that little black dot right there where the horn is. So that's what I've got right here uh, for the hook that we're using. A two watt is perfect uh, for me. I'm not saying it's perfect for everybody out there. Again, everything is subjective to what I do, how I like to fish and what works best for me. If there's a better way out there and then I learn it, then that's cool. Whatever works for you, do it. This is just what I use. Uh, the leader line is approximately, I'm gonna guess maybe a little over, like maybe two and a half feet long. And how I tie my hook to my leader line, it's a four twist fisherman knot or otherwise known as a trilene. This is 30 pound monofilament from Suffix. Let's grab the mono. So here goes the monofilament right there. And uh, it's pretty inexpensive stuff. I think it's like $10 for 110 yards. Yeah, 110 yards, 30 pounds suffix. Fairly easy to tie. It's very abrasion resistant. So that's what I am using right here. This is what I also use out there at the jetties. So nothing is gonna get away. So that's a trilene knot. I do four twists and then over here, you got the swivel at the end of your popping cork. Let's give myself some slack. So on the swivel, it's the same exact knot that we have over here for the hook. So that right there, it, again, is another four twist trilene or simple fisherman's knot. And uh, that right there is how far down I was fishing them. I didn't weigh down my shrimp at all. Now, if you want to, you can take the quarter ounce, which is what I got right here to upright the bobber. You can take and put that somewhere down here to make sure that your shrimp sinks down. I didn't need to do that on this particular day. If I'm out there at the jetties, then maybe that's something that I'm going to do because I want them to get down there. The seagulls will just rape your shrimp and uh, you're gonna have to continuously do that. And then at the other end, depending on what your line is, if it's braid, I would say use like a uni knot or use a uh, polymer knot. Uh, that's what seems to work for me. That's the knots that I'm gonna use. But because this leader line, this is a setup that I take out there to the jetties with me for my slip cork and that's Honestly, that's why I took it with me on that particular wade fishing trip was because this setup already had the slip cork on it and that's what I was gonna hook my live bait to. But then as soon as my son started catching all the fish off of the popping cork, it definitely has an ability through that chugging noise, the popping sound, uh, it calls the fish in and that's why I swapped it out. But this was the setup that I had. Uh, I've got 
30 pound mono on it. It's approximately, I think I put like a 12 foot leader for the jetties. And I didn't want to cut off all that leader line, so I just tied it right there and I've got an FG knot. So now, uh, to answer some of the questions that I received over there, I didn't want to like type out a long drawn out response. Um, this is not a setup that I would dedicate towards the popping cord. I'm actually going to possibly purchase one, but what I think I'm going to start with is like a medium light power rod. Uh, maybe the Arius, maybe the hollow point. I'm not too sure. I'll probably lean towards the Arius from Old 18 Outfitters. And if y'all haven't noticed by now, the reason why I use a lot of Old 18 rods, I'm biased. I am completely biased. I'll be the first to tell you that I'm not trying to sell you anything, but those guys support my fishing channel. So I support them. And these are the rods that help me to get my bills paid. So if you have some other kind of rod that you want to use, well then by all means use that. I'm not saying that you need to go buy what it is that I use. I'm just giving y'all an idea for those of you looking to get into the sport. And if you see me using it and it's working, well then if you want to purchase that, I'm just letting y'all know what it is that I'm using. So enough about the old 18 plug. Um, I, I'm thinking about a medium light Arius that's seven foot just so that I can do everything else that I need to do. I'm predominantly a kayak fisherman and I uh, need the rod to be seven foot. I've learned to work with that length. I'm not a like uh, snob when it comes to technique. Uh, I just believe as long as you can get the job done, then that's all that really matters. So the technique for me is if I can make it happen and I, it allows me to catch fish, um, then good. Uh, seven foot, I got plenty of leverage to sling whatever it is out there. So that's why I would go with the seven footer. I can use it in more applications as well. And I rarely ever step above like a light powered rod. So a medium light is the next step up. A little bit more backbone for uh, leverage and slinging these popping corks out there. And uh, that's basically the rod that I'm going to try out. I'm not saying that it's going to work. If it doesn't, then maybe we'll go up to a medium power. And then if that doesn't work, which I'm pretty sure it would right at medium power because this one had plenty of backbone to do what I needed to do. Um, I just do not want to use a bait caster, which leads me to the next thing. Right here on my fishing reel rack, I've got two 1000 series spinning reels. This is a Shimano Seros. I have not used it in quite some time. And this is the Shimano Stratic right here. 1000, it's a CI4 Plus. Uh, both very capable, plenty of drag to do what it is that I need it to do. Before I step up into the world of 2500 series spinning reels, I'm gonna give the 1000 a try. They are workhorses and they're still small. Uh, it will alleviate me having to purchase a fishing reel if these will be able to work. I know that I can make this up to a medium light, but that is the heaviest that I'm really gonna to wanna to use for a 1000 series. When you get to medium light, uh, that's when you should start contemplating purchasing a 2500 series, at least for me. Again, very subjective to what it is that I'm doing. Um, I just, I think that I can probably get away with slinging a popping cork with one of these 1000 series spinning reels. And it, if it allows me to do that and I don't have to step up, well then I get to save some money. But that's my ideal setup right there. 1000 series spinning reel with 10 pound braid, uh, this right here is overkill 30 pound mono. I'm just showing y'all what I used on that particular trip. Uh, more than likely, I will go with like maybe 10 to 20. Let's just say 15 pound. Let me grab what I will probably use. We've got some 15 pound fluorocarbon from Suffix. This is just plain fishing line. And I think that will be the happy medium if I need to go up or down. Again, I'm 
barely getting my feet wet. I'm barely stepping into the world of using a popping cork. I've always owned them, but rarely ever like to use them. I do recognize the fact that on a tough day, whenever I can't produce a bite on artificials, the live bait definitely works. I do own a cast net, so I will probably go out there and start using stuff like that again, trying to cast net me some finger mullet. And uh, if we're having a hard go, maybe the next trip out, I'll just start purchasing some live shrimp so that uh, before settling for a skunk, we will start slinging some live bait. And uh, thank you so much for tagging along on this video. I hope you learned just a little bit of what it is that I am doing right here. It's all trial and error. I'm pretty sure there are some true tested methods out there, but uh, I'm gonna start getting my feet wet and uh, see what this can produce for me. Um, so be looking forward to this content over on the fishing channel. Again, thank you so much for tagging along on today's video and I will catch y'all next time when we're off the water. Thank you.